G'day everyone. So we're gonna do a quick review, or a long-term review rather, of the uh, ARB Esperance rooftop tent. So we've had this one for about nine months, and since then, it's done the Peninsula Development Road and made it all the way to the top of Cape York. It's done the entire east coast of Australia. It's been around Tasmania. It's done the Nullarbor. It's done about 30,000 kilometers. So let's have a look, show you some of the hints and tips, some of the tricks for using it, how to set it up, how to pack it up, and whether or not it's a good long-term investment. Let's have a look. So the first thing to notice is it's obviously mounted for us on an ARB uh, Ascent canopy, which is one of the reasons that we got it. We figured it had tied in, it would tie in fairly well uh, from an ARB product into an ARB product. And that is the case. You can see that sitting on top of a dual cab canopy, it fits really, really well. As far as construction goes, so you've got the hard shell plastic that makes up the roof. And if you have a look around the front here, you can see that it's got that aerodynamic shape, which we found is fantastic as far as the uh, fuel consumption goes. And we haven't actually noticed that it's added any drag to the car. So that's been a real bonus. One thing I will point out here is if you have a look along the front here, you can see it's hit every bug and a couple of small rocks for 25, 30,000 Ks. So as a result, this is a bit pitted and a bit damaged. Uh, if you want it to look its best, you're probably gonna wanna put some kind of protective coating or something on there and then take it off later because the bugs definitely hit at some speed. So you can see here how it's mounted and it's just got these U clamps here and up under here, the U clamps that mount it to the roof racks. These have been fantastic. So once they've been locked in place, they have not moved. You can imagine on the PDR, the corrugations that this thing was copping didn't move for a moment. So the, uh, as far as the mounting goes, that's a big win. Well done ARB on that one. As you'd hope for a hard shell rooftop tent, one of the best things about it is just the setup. So let's have a quick look at that. To start, you've got these three straps here. Unclip those and pull the straps out. The roof's just lifted up by a couple of gas struts, so to open it, push up, and it'll just rise up itself, easy. You've got the elastic strap here on the side that's meant to pull in as you do on the pack up. So if you undo that and then just use and then use this blue retaining strap just to bring it around to the other side. So hot tip number one. Secure this somewhere so that it doesn't just flap around or as often happens, get caught in here between the canopy and the cab. So for us, quick clove hitch around the roof rack and that keeps that there stops it from blowing around, it stops it from blowing away. All right, the next step is to actually extend the ladder and fold the base out. I find it easiest just to stand on the wheel. There are two clips there, and then pull it out. Extend it as far as it'll go. And then if you pull this down, that'll lever the base out. And you can just gently pull it out. One of the traps for new players is that this can get caught under here and stop the base from coming all the way down. So as it's coming down, if you grab that and flick it out to the side, you won't have any issues.
the ladder itself. So let it come all the way out and then roll the ladder cover up. Secure with the Velcro straps. Robert, your father's brother. So two things here. First one, you've got these, it comes with these pouches. A storage pouch, weatherproof storage pouch. And a good one for your shoes. These are fantastic. And as you can see, if you keep them flat, you can actually keep them on there. They're just secured with some sail track here, but you can leave them on there. And we found that to be really handy. Uh, the second thing is once you've got the base nice and flat, collapse that. That's actually supporting the weight of the base. So you want it as close to vertical as you can get it. You won't be able to get it all the way to vertical without it being a massive pain in the butt, but you can definitely collapse this most of the way, most nights. Actually, the third thing out of two, this strap, if you just leave it on the ground, it gets all dirty and trodden on and bug it up. So secure that and that'll keep it out of your way. It'll stop it from getting muddy and mean that when you go to pack it up, it's good to go. So that's the base done. The next step for us is to put out the fly and the side pockets. So let's have a look at that. So when you come up to set it up, you'll just need to roll up the, uh, the door. And secure that with the standard hook and loop fasteners that most tents have. The next step for the setup, you'll get these poles. So grab two out of the bag and let's see in a moment where they go. So these are the hooks. Now, one thing that I can guarantee, these come with little rubber grommets on the end, and those rubber grommets have a shelf life of about a month. And after that, they fall off and they get lost, and you'll never see them again, so don't worry too much about that. So the actual poles themselves go in these holes here that you can see under here. So I'll lift that up and have a quick look. And if you have a look, you got, that's where they go, in there. Now again, a tip for young players, don't try to get them in perpendicular, they go out at an angle. So, place it in there, goes out at an angle, rotate so she's straight up, and then it'll go into these holes. So just into there, feed it in there, let it go, and that's right. Do that again on the other side. So making sure you've got that angle, so it's not straight, it's at the angle. And I emphasize that because we found people trying to put them in straight and they couldn't figure out why the poles didn't go all the way. And then hook it in like that, and there's your tent. So it's got these flaps on the side that you just Velcro out, and there's Velcro pads underneath that you can attach that. The next hint, if it's gonna be windy, do this strap under here up like that. Otherwise, again, it'll be banging against this all night, and it might keep you up. There's a Velcro flap over the hinge on this side, but don't do that one yet. That comes when you set the lights up. So let's go inside and have a quick look on the inside. 
because with the exception of the lights, that's pretty much the external setup complete. As you come in, you can see one of the good things, midi mesh, and that's on all of the windows. So we've appreciated that. Uh, it's actually got better mesh than the tent does, sorry, than our caravan does. So even when there's tiny bugs in the caravan, we've never had any in here. If you have a look inside, you can see that there's a fair bit of room. So it's uh, pretty much a queen size mattress. The mattress itself, is quilted foam and one thing is that there's no anti-condensation underneath uh, i'm guessing that the base is meant to be insulated and it seems to work fairly well but we have found that you still you still get condensation under there and i'll show you when we pack up uh, one of the reasons why we got an anti-condensation mat which fell out the other night so we need to put that back in but as far as space goes uh, I'm six foot and I fit comfortably uh, laying this way so unless you're seven foot six foot five you should be absolutely fine the canvas the canvas is all uh, good quality canvas we've had tropical rains in the Cape uh, we've had cold fronts in Tasmania haven't had a leak it has been fantastic very happy with the canvas itself and that's assisted by the fly which we'll get to in a second these windows so again midi mesh on the windows and you can see just here oh, wrong one the uh you can open the midi mesh and then these windows can be extended using exactly the same poles that you use for the fly so you can expand those out, have those keeping out the weather. Uh, and again, from experience, they do a fantastic job. So even in some pretty severe rain, uh, and depending upon the direction of the wind, you can expand those out. This is one of the kickers. So when you go to set this up for the first time, these are the lights. So you connect your USB into either your battery pack or uh, we connect ours to the car and then you've got a light up here just above the door fantastic idea works really really well you've also got lights under the base connected to the bottom of the base and it took us a while to figure out how to connect those so it comes with the connectors and you have to actually connect them up for the first time uh, and then for the bottom one, for the bottom one, because again, from experience and from seeing other people struggle, come down and it comes out of the floor just near that hinge. All right, so connect it into there. And then the switch has got brighter, uh, changes the cycle so you can have just inside, just outside, or inside and outside, dimmer and power. And then that just gets stored in there most of the time speaking of the hinges so you'll notice that there that this one has that black plastic knob and the reason I say don't do the velcro up straight away on the outside is so that you can put this light out through there and connect it up and then you come out and do that hinge cover up and that just stops the weather getting in you'll notice on this side that we have an 8 mil butterfly nut instead because the black plastic one fell off somewhere between Cape York and Tasmania um, and we didn't notice so we just went out and got it's just a standard 8 mil uh, bolt so you can put anything on that end don't worry too much if you lose it um, as far as construction goes in here everything seems to be good the mattress is good it's only a 4 mil foam mattress so it's not the most comfortable thing and the anti condensation mat really helps and as you can see the kids have been playing in here since we last slept in here so they've managed to drag the sand in which we get to vacuum out tonight that's great you'll notice as well these blankets uh and the way that we've got them up there so you can't put much in here for pack up we used to just lay the blankets out flat but we found that actually stacking them behind the gas strut uh, works much better for pack up so 
We've got there two pretty thick blankets, a wool blanket and a uh, quilted coverlet. No pillows and usually there might be a sheet in there as well. And so you can leave those in, but you can't really leave it set up. The last thing to notice for inside is the moonroof. So in theory, you've got a lovely view of the outside. In practice, you have to take the fly off. And we'll go and have a look at another tip for young players when it comes to the fly. But because of that, we have not yet used the moonroof. So that just stays done up. And that's about it. See in here how the canvas is attached. It's got these Velcro. And then as you see on the outside, uh, there's actually a zip as well. But that's worked absolutely fine. We haven't had any issues with that. And that's the whole way around. So that's the inside. Let's go outside and have a quick look. And uh, some of the tips for young players. All right. Tip for young players number, I don't know, five. You'll notice that this has a big surface area. And if you can imagine a wind coming straight in here, catches the fly and pushes against the tent. Now, this weighs a bit, but it doesn't weigh that much. And it's very easy for the wind to lift it up. Ask us how we know, because the answer is that during a cold front in Tasmania, the wind came through in the middle of the night, pushed this up, and we had the kids sleeping in it that night. Uh, the kids don't weigh anywhere near as much as me, and as a result, in the middle of the night, they found themselves starting to angle up and getting lifted and thrown around as this cold front came through. So the solution that we found is a strap around this top step that then comes down and we tie it off to the wheel. So just a ratchet strap to keep tension, to keep that pulled down. You can peg it to the ground if you wanted to, if you're worried about your wheels, but something to pull this down to keep the tension on it so that when the wind tries to lift that up and push it away, you've got it tensioned down to the ground. Hot tip. So you might notice here that we have this yellow cord, which is not part of the standard ARV fit out. And again, this is after thousands of kilometers of use. One of the things that we've figured out is a little bit short on the, on the model as it's issued. So maybe ARB will make some improvements for the 2.0 version. But let's have a bit of a closer look. And if you see up here, it's a zip in there that's holding the fly to the, uh, to the shell. Now, what happens is, when it gets windy, this bit here flaps and flaps and flaps and flaps and flaps, and that zip slowly starts working its way up there, and then starts going across the top of the shell. And if you thought it was loud before, once this starts flapping the whole edge, it gets a lot louder. So what we've done here, is we've just got a bit of cord. This is an old guy rope from a tent that no longer that we no longer have, and we've attached that to the zip. It means that when it does start flapping up, if you don't notice, you can pull it down tight again, which is what we've done this morning. And then, if you know that there's going to be wind, you can take this and we attach it onto that, and it just keeps a bit of tension so that it stops it from actually going over. And we're expecting a cold front tonight. So tonight we'll sleep with this attached to there. That'll tension up the fly and stop it from flapping all night. So overall, will we say it's worthwhile? Yes, it has been a fantastic tent. Um, we were this close to getting one of the Motop ones instead of this. And it was only the fact that this came out uh, just before we put our money down on the Motop one, and I thought, oh, an ARB tent should probably integrate well with an ARB canopy. Um, we better go and have a look before we spend our money. And I'm incredibly glad that we did. It's well made, it's very robust. Uh, we have found one of the things is uh, those eight mil nut 
uh, came off on the hinge on the inside. That's about it for a car, for a tent, to have been on top of a car for 30,000 odd Ks and to still be doing the same job day in, day out uh, and look as good as it does, it still looks pretty well new, is a testament to how good a product they've made there. So if you are in the market for a hard shell rooftop tent, you can't go wrong. As far as the best things about it, the aerodynamic shape, it's got its uh, good side and its bad side actually. Um, from a good point of view, hasn't cost us any extra in fuel to have this on the roof. From a bad perspective though, it only opens on the driver's side. If your setup is set for that and you've got uh, like an awning or something on the passenger side where they usually are, then no issue for you. But if you're like us and you'd love to be able to set up like a clamshell where you can set the ladder up on either side or at the back for access, um, it is a bit of a pain that it's always on the driver's side that you have to open it and set it up. But one of the costs that you have for an otherwise great product. Uh, another pro is the weatherproofness. As I said, it's been through tropical downpours up on the Cape. Uh, cold fronts, awesome cold fronts down in Tasmania uh, and through South Australia. For those of you that know the wind on the Air Peninsula, we've had it out in uh, some really windy conditions and once we learnt that you strap down the base um, that part of it's been fantastic which raises another con it would have been good if there was some way for that base to lock into place uh, rather than you having to strap it down when it comes to that weather but once you've got that sorted it's great and the only other one is really that fly the fly is fantastic for the weather but to get it on and take it off is a pain in the butt which means the moon roof which would be great on, uh, on really clear nights where you could lay there and maybe look at the stars and that kind of thing is pretty pointless because it's a hassle getting the fly on and off and I'm not going to do that uh, just for the one night where I might get some stars and then the next day spend uh, however long it would be to put the fly back on. So hopefully for version 2.0, uh, ARB can fix a couple of those things but overall with version 1 we reckon they've done a fantastic job if you're in the market, go and check these out. You won't be sorry that you did. Cheers.